Nestled under the majestic shade of the Alps, surrounded by breathtaking landscapes and deep blue lakes, rests a nation renowned as much for its historical neutrality as for its accurate clocks and scrumptious chocolates. Switzerland is a country that has emerged as a symbol of wealth and prosperity, diplomacy and innovation. How did this small alpine nation become an economic powerhouse in so many ways? How did it sail across the turbulent seas of history, squeezed by military giants from prehistoric times to become Europe's current financial heartland? Today's journey takes us back in time, charting the steps of this nation from its earliest beginnings, through the challenges faced during the Roman era, religious upheavals, wars, and breakthroughs. Be ready for a trip through time as we explore the unique history of this tiny country called Switzerland. Our tour dates back thousands of years, when the first humans set foot on the Swiss Alps. Throughout prehistoric times, these ancient inhabitants took refuge in caves, facing the harshness of the Alpine climate. Around 15,000 BC, during the Paleolithic period, small groups of hunter-gatherers scattered across the region, living by hunting, fishing, and gathering. They have left behind traces of their existence, stone tools, bones, and evidence of campfires. The Bronze Age came around 2000 BC. Communities started to settle down, farming and domesticating animals. The Swiss lakes became the focus of these communities. Stilt villages built on stakes and lakes emerged. Switzerland became connected to Europe's major cultures throughout early trade routes that crossed the Alps. With the Bronze Age turning to the Iron Age, Switzerland was engulfed by a new wave of change. Celtic tribes boasting a unique culture and innovative metallurgical skills started to settle throughout the region. The Helvetians, among the most outstanding Celtic tribes, predominantly established themselves in the Swiss Plateau region. With tightly organized communities and a flourishing economy, they grew into a major regional power. Yet the Helvetians' rise coincided with the expansion of an empire that lived to the south, Rome. In 58 BC, when the Helvetians sought to migrate west in search of more fertile land, they came up against the overwhelming obstacle of Caesar's Roman legions. The clash was unavoidable. After several battles, the Helvetians were overwhelmed, and Switzerland became part of the Roman Empire under the name of Helvetia. For the next few centuries, the region underwent a profound Romanization. New towns were founded, roads were built, and Roman culture pervaded every aspect of daily life. Augusta Rorica and Aventicum prospered as urban centers, making them symbols of Roman influence and legacy in Switzerland. Like all empires, Rome also experienced its twilight years. With the decline of the Western Roman Empire by the 5th century AD, Switzerland stood on the threshold of a new era. Germanic invasions, especially from the Alemanni and Burgundians, brought new challenges to the region. These Germanic tribes gradually settled down and blended with the Romanized inhabitants. This blending resulted in a complex culture that would form the core of Swiss identity for centuries to come. When the dust of the Germanic invasion settled, Medieval Switzerland began to emerge, featuring fiefdoms, monasteries, and the ever-present mountains, quiet witnesses to a period of transformation. During the Middle Ages, which lasted almost a thousand years, Switzerland experienced a period of fragmentation. Present-day Switzerland was divided between different powers, the Holy Roman Empire, the Kingdom of Burgundy, and other smaller feudal lords. Positioned strategically right at the heart of Europe, Switzerland became a key point on the trade routes. Villages boomed, flourishing with trade, and cities started to acquire importance. But with the growing threat of external domination, especially from Habsburg, Austria, the Alpine communities sensed the need to unite. Three Swiss cantons established the Federal Pact in 1291, a defensive alliance that signaled the birth of the Swiss Confederation. Switzerland's peaceful landscape now synonymous with calm and neutrality, was once the scene of crucial confrontations that shaped the nation's identity. Two such moments stand out. 
In 1386, on the fields of Sempach, a vastly outnumbered Swiss army took a stand against the mighty Habsburg forces, one of Europe's most dominant families. It was not just a clash of arms, but a struggle for the right to self-determination. The ascendant Swiss Confederation resisted the Habsburg's domination attempts for years. This resistance was challenged at Sempach. The Swiss's toughness and innovative tactics prevailed against all odds. The victory at Sempach was not merely a military triumph, it was a milestone that cemented Switzerland's de facto independence from Habsburg ambitions. The following years saw the Swiss Confederation expand and prosper. Their military power was recognized throughout Europe, leading them to embark on several campaigns beyond their borders. In 1515, close to the Italian town of Marignano, the Swiss encountered a powerful opponent, the combined forces of France and Venice. The battle was ferocious, marked by Swiss bravery and persistence, but the French prevailed due to their numerical and tactical superiority. This defeat at Marignano brought an end to Switzerland's expansionist aspirations. Following Marignano, Switzerland pursued a policy of neutrality, a move that would shape its position on the world stage for centuries to come. Once a sword-wielding nation, it now armed itself with diplomacy and peace. Medieval Switzerland was not just made of battles and alliances. Monasteries, such as St. Gallen, became learning and cultural centers, keeping knowledge alive through the centuries and adding to Europe's cultural heritage. Cities like Bern, Zurich, and Geneva started to exert a considerable influence, not only as commercial centers, but also as hotbeds of power and governance. The guilds and bourgeois families both played a crucial role in molding urban life. In rural regions, life moved at a different pace. Farmers, artisans, and shepherds molded the landscape, toiling the land and herds, carrying on traditions which are still an intrinsic element of Swiss identity today. The Swiss Middle Ages comprised a period of development, struggle, but also innovation and cultural evolution. The foundations established during this time were to influence the nation's path in subsequent eras, preparing it for even greater challenges and triumphs. As the Middle Ages fell to the Renaissance, Europe experienced a revival in art, science, and thought. With its strategic location, Switzerland proved not to be exempt from these changes. It became a melting pot of ideas and innovations. During the Renaissance, Humanism blossomed in Swiss cities. Basel soon rose to prominence as a hub of erudition and book printing. Printers such as Johann Froben churned out works by Erasmus of Rotterdam, one of the leading humanists of the time. Not only did this elevate Switzerland's cultural profile, but it also set the stage for the religious shifts that were to come and that would change the face of Europe forever. Echoes of a religious revolution were ringing through Europe at the start of the 16th century. The Protestant Reformation, started by Martin Luther in Germany, was finding fruitful ground in Switzerland. Holdrich Zwingli in Zurich and then John Calvin in Geneva became key figures in Switzerland's reform movement. Zurich, under Zwingli's sway, embraced the Reformation in 1523, which was followed by other cities and regions. New theology stressed the primacy of the Bible and rejected doctrines and customs which were not solely based on Scripture. Under Calvin, Geneva became a Protestant Rome, drawing religious refugees from all over Europe. The city became a bellwether of Calvinism, with the influence of its theology spreading far beyond its walls. But the Reformation was hardly peaceful. Cantons, communities, and families were split, Religious conflicts, such as the Koppel Wars, erupted between Protestant and Catholic cantons, mirroring the tensions gripping the continent. Europe was in upheaval as the 17th century progressed. The shattering Thirty Years' War, which involved almost all the continent's major powers and split the continent between Catholics and Protestants, was ending. Switzerland discovered its place as a nation at the heart of this great peace agreement. The Treaty of Westphalia was signed in 1648. 
it ended the war and redrew Europe's political map with a clause of great significance for Switzerland. Its independence after centuries of de facto autonomy was finally formally recognized. The Swiss Confederation rose from the shadows of the Thirty Years' War as a sovereign entity, unencumbered by the Holy Roman Empire. Swiss sovereignty was to be challenged again, however, this time by a figure whose ambition knew no limits. Napoleon Bonaparte, aiming for a Europe under French rule, turned his attention to Switzerland at the end of the 18th century. Napoleonic forces invaded the Confederation in 1798, establishing the Helvetic Republic. The old Confederation, with its cantons and traditions, was disbanded, replaced by a centralized state shaped according to French revolutionary ideals. Switzerland, under Napoleonic rule, experienced radical transformations in its administration, justice, and economy. But the Swiss independent spirit was not easily quelled. In many parts of the country, there was resistance and unrest. But Napoleonic rule did not last long. With Napoleon's fall, the old confederation was reinstated. Switzerland had once again proved its resilience and ability for self-determination. As the Industrial Revolution began to transform Europe at the turn of the 19th century, Switzerland embarked on its own economic and technological metamorphosis. The textile industry was initially at the forefront of industrialization in Switzerland. In particular, the northeastern region witnessed a proliferation of cotton mills. The mechanical loom, which had been introduced from England, stepped up production and elevated Switzerland to the status of one of Europe's leading textile producers. But Switzerland was not limited to the textile industry. Watchmaking, an already long-standing tradition in the country, was changed by mass production, solidifying Switzerland as a world leader in this field. When people think of Switzerland, picturesque mountain landscapes and green pastures often come to mind. It is precisely in these pastures that one of the country's most flavorful stories begins. Switzerland has had a proud tradition of milk production since ancient times. Nurtured in the rich alpine pastures, cows yield milk of exceptional quality, which has been the foundation for a variety of dairy products for centuries, including the world-famous Swiss cheeses, such as Emmental and Gruyere. But it was the alchemy between Swiss milk and cocoa that resulted in one of the nation's most iconic products, milk chocolate. As cocoa was increasingly imported from the colonies in the 19th century, Switzerland rapidly established itself as a leading center of chocolate-making innovation. This is where milk chocolate was invented, a triumph that revolutionized the industry and set a global standard. Innovators such as Rodolphe Lindt were instrumental in introducing techniques such as conching, which gave Swiss chocolate its distinctive smooth and creamy texture. Combined with the high quality of Swiss milk, these new features made Swiss chocolate a byword for luxury and excellence. Switzerland's emergence as Europe's banking center began in the 19th century, when large institutions such as UBS and Credit Suisse were founded. These banks, with their strict and methodical approach, quickly set lofty standards for the global banking sector. Banking secrecy, which was introduced at the beginning of the 20th century, further enticed foreign capital. While it has been criticized and reformed in the last few decades, it consolidated Switzerland's position as a stronghold of financial privacy. With its unique role as the headquarters of several international organizations, Geneva also established itself as a global financial powerhouse, accommodating many investment funds, commodity trading firms, and international financial organizations. Switzerland continued to grow and diversify as the 20th century progressed. Pharmaceuticals, high-end machinery, and a robust service sector, particularly banking and finance, cemented Switzerland as an economic superpower. A crucial milestone was achieved in 1848. The federal constitution of Switzerland was enacted, establishing a strong federal government and unifying the cantons under a common flag. More than just an administrative structure, the constitution also ensured the civil rights of its citizens, granting the freedoms we today associate with Switzerland. 
While conflict raged across Europe, Switzerland took a different path. It adopted a policy of neutrality, a decision that, over the years, kept it on the sidelines of the continent's most destructive clashes, including the two world wars. This neutrality was not only strategic, but also a consequence of the peaceful and mediation values for which Switzerland has become known. Switzerland's stellar reputation as a mediator and peacemaker did not go unnoticed. In the 1920s, as an acknowledgement of its commitment to peace and neutrality, the city of Geneva was selected to host the League of Nations, the forerunner of the United Nations organization. This proved Switzerland's pivotal role on the global diplomatic stage and its contribution to world peace. The country became a landmark of stability, neutrality, and diplomacy on the global stage. Switzerland has successfully sailed the stormy waters of history over the centuries, growing from a collection of tribes and confederations into a unified, well-respected, revered, and prosperous nation.